Hello, my name is Eric Coleman with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and I'm a health scientist within the National Center for Environmental Health. In today's presentation, we will discuss NEARS, or the National Environmental Assessment Reporting System, and we hope today's discussion will encourage you to improve your competency on conducting environmental assessments as part of foodborne outbreaks and report those data to CDC. So if I know my audience like I think I do, I'm sure many of you start your day with a little food safety news, and I'm sure many of you are probably pretty familiar with the outbreaks that have been taking place across a number of Chipotle restaurants where a number of people have gotten sick. These series of outbreaks have been quite the topic of discussion, especially amongst readers of such articles. And today I've chosen to highlight two of the comments related to this specific article on some Chipotle restaurants that were closed in Washington and Oregon. And I'll paraphrase. Uh, the first article or first comment says, are there any places that compile a list of repeat offenders? I mean, I feel like I hear about Chipotle an awful lot in these sort of things. And then someone replies to this comment and says, no, you're right. This would be about the third outbreak associated with Chipotle that I've heard about this year. I'm wondering if it's bad food safety practices in how that's causing this, or can this be traced back to a supplier? Either way, something needs to change. And change is exactly what I came to talk about today. Achieving food safety success may be closer than you think. It's nears. Now, Within the National Center for Environmental Health here at CDC, I work within the Division of Emergency and Environmental Health Services. And our goal is to essentially improve environmental public health practice to prevent foodborne outbreaks. And we plan to achieve this by focusing in on two major priorities, the first being to improve the reporting of environmental factors that contribute to foodborne outbreaks. And we plan to do this through the use of NEARS and also through our free environmental assessment training, which is available online. And the second is to strengthen federal, state, local, and industry policies and practices, specifically within three areas, and they are hand washing, ear worker, and kitchen manager certification. And those three areas of interest were chosen because we feel like they have the greatest influence on the food safety system. The ultimate goal for public health and food safety officials is not just stopping foodborne disease outbreaks once they occur, but actually preventing them from happening in the first place. Despite the fact that thousands of employees have been trained in food safety around the world, millions have been spent globally on food safety research, and countless inspections and tests have been performed, food safety still remains a significant public health challenge. Why is that? Food safety is an ever-changing environment that may require us to go beyond the traditional trainings and routine inspections. As food safety officials, we have the responsibility to drive or guide improved food safety policies and practices. And here at CDC, within the National Center for Environmental Health, we work to improve environmental health practice by identifying and preventing environmental factors contributing to foodborne outbreaks. Now, as public health officials investigate outbreaks, they do this not only to control them, but also to prevent additional illnesses and to learn how to prevent similar outbreaks from happening in the future. Most outbreak investigation teams typically involve your epidemiology and your laboratory and environmental health staff, the three-legged stool. And they also may include partners in risk communication, public health, industry, and other disciplines as needed. Outbreak investigations are essentially opportunities for different authorities and professionals to come together and work together as a team. They also may reveal opportunities at which the public health systems that detect and respond to outbreaks can be improved. Outbreak investigations and additional research should result in better industry practices, better regulations and enforcement by the regulatory agencies, and better consumer understanding, all of which should reduce the number of foodborne illnesses that occur. Now, for the purpose of today's presentation, I'm going to focus in on the environmental component of foodborne outbreak investigations. 
And they're typically conducted by your environmental health specialists or your environmental professionals who focus in on things like people, process, equipment, economics, and food. And they essentially work to identify how and why the outbreak occurred and then work to develop effective interventions to prevent future outbreaks from occurring. Now, environmental assessments are at the heart of what most food regulatory programs do on a day-to-day -day basis. And they typically are conducted by your environmental health specialist. And a foodborne outbreak is very different from other types of environmental assessments that food programs may conduct on a daily basis. The challenge of a foodborne outbreak environmental assessment is the reconstruction of past events. And even more challenging is the fact that these assessments only represent one component of response that involves not only the food program, but also epidemiologists, laboratory professionals, and possibly others from other program areas, who again are essentially all working together to help reconstruct past events. The environmental assessment provides the pieces of the outbreak puzzle that describe Again, how the environment contributed to the introduction and or transmissions of agents that cause illness. And the objectives of an environmental assessment are to essentially identify contributing factors and their environmental antecedents, and then develop recommendations for informed interventions. So to help describe a little bit more about environmental assessments in general, Contributing factors are essentially determinants that directly or indirectly cause the outbreak, and they describe how the outbreak occurred. They are categorized as contamination factors, proliferation factors, and survival factors. Contributing factors are specific to an outbreak event, and they may or may not reflect code violation. So for example, contributing factors related to a viral outbreak may include workers while working ill or per personal hygiene, but evidence of improper code holding, while it may be a code violation, it would not be reported as a contributing factor in this outbreak. Environmental antecedents, those things that lead to contributing factors, they help describe why the outbreak occurred. And based on our work here within the National Center for Environmental Health, we have identified categories of potential antecedents, and they include people, equipment, process, food, and economic factors. So to kind of put this all together, this slide here provides an overview of an outbreak that has occurred where norovirus was the identified pathogen or agent. The outbreak was caused by sandwiches that were eaten in a restaurant. The contributing factors or what caused the outbreak was due to a worker not properly washing his or her hands after using the restroom. The worker then went on to prepare sandwiches using his or her bare hands. And on top of that, the worker came to work while ill. Now, the environmental antecedents that were identified or what caused those contributing factors were due to the hand sinks within the establishment not being properly equipped with soap. The restaurant also did not supply its workers with disposable gloves to prevent bare hand contact. And additionally, there was no paid sick leave for food workers. Now here at CDC, we have come up with five basic steps or recommendations for conducting environmental assessments, and they're highlighted or notated on this slide. The first being planning and preparation. Now, a wise person once told me, when you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So I think it's very important that we focus in on planning and preparation during a foodborne outbreak investigation event before it actually happens. So this is the perfect time for you to work with your program staff across environmental health, epidemiology, and laboratory programs, and other discipline areas as needed to essentially assign roles and responsibilities for each group so that everyone is aware of their roles and responsibilities in the event of an outbreak event. Step two is the site visit, and this is where you'll actually conduct interviews, you'll perform walkthroughs of the establishment and observations, and then you'll collect any environmental or food samples as needed for testing. And then you'll also have an opportunity to collect any establishment records that may be relevant to the outbreak investigation. Step three is the assessing of information and identifying contributing factors. 
step four is where you would make recommendations for control strategies. And these would be steps that should be taken to immediately stop the outbreak and prevent future spread of this agent. And then also longer term strategies that are important for reducing the likelihood of any future outbreaks occurring at this type of establishment. And then last but certainly not is the reporting, and this is where you would summarize your findings and outcomes and report those data to NEARS or the National Environmental Assessment Reporting System. Now, we cannot overstate the value of reporting environmental assessment data. Environmental assessment data are essentially key to understanding how and why outbreaks occur, and they assist with developing appropriate guidelines policies and practices that essentially work to prevent future outbreaks from occurring. Now at this time, there's limited information on environmental assessment data that has been reported to CDC, and we would like to see those data increase over time. Additionally, when environmental assessment data is reported to CDC, it provides an opportunity for us to link these data with data that's currently already being reported within the National Outbreak Reporting System, or NORS for short. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in today's presentation. Now at this time, we have a total of 19 state and local agencies that are currently reporting into NEARS, their environmental assessment data. There are a total of uh, 13 states and six local agencies. And again, we like to see those numbers increase over time as people become more aware and understand the value of reporting their environmental assessment data to NEARS. Now, currently, the National Outbreak Reporting System is a foodborne outbreak surveillance system that all states report to. Contributing factors or what happened to cause an outbreak environmentally are not reported very often to the system. And unfortunately, sometimes when they are reported, they're reported inaccurately. Additionally, there is no information reported regarding environmental antecedents, so why those contributing factors occurred. And information regarding both contributing factors and environmental antecedents are pivotal to the development of policies and practices to keep food safe or to understand why policies and practices designed to keep food safe are not properly implemented. Understanding how and why outbreaks occur is at the heart of preventing them in the future. So in April of 2014, we launched a companion to NORS NEARS, the National Environmental Assessment Reporting System. And this surveillance system is targeted to jurisdictions that inspect and regulate restaurants and other food service establishments. And this system provides an avenue to capture environmental assessment data that describes foodborne outbreaks associated again with food service establishments. And this slide here provides an overview of the data reporting instrument, which is broken down into uh, seven parts, and I'll quickly touch on those. Part one is the general characterization of the outbreak, and that provides basic epidemiological context for the outbreak. Part two is the establishment description, and that gathers basic information about the sanitation infrastructure of the establishment. Part three is the structured manager interview, and that characterizes policies and practices in the establishment based on that manager interview. Part four is the establishment observation. And that's an opportunity where we collect information concerning the establishment based on observation of the facility and practices used during the environmental assessment. Part five is where we provide information regarding suspected or confirmed foods. Part six is where information is provided for any environmental or food sampling that's taken during the outbreak investigation. It's important to note that we are not collecting any human or clinical samples in this section. And then last, part seven is the contributing factors, and this is where you will describe contributing factors that would introduce or otherwise permit contamination, proliferation, and survival of pathogens. Now, these next few slides provide an overview of the flow of outbreak data that's reported to CDC. So, first, people are exposed to a hazard. People get sick, and then they may or may not seek treatment. Uh, the health department is then notified of the possible outbreak. The health department then conducts an environmental assessment as part of the outbreak investigation. 
Those data are then gathered and then collected by the health department and entered into NEARS. And then CDC reviews the environmental assessment data that's been reported for accuracy and analysis. And then we work to disseminate those data through a number of summaries or publications, which we make available to the public. Now, as I've gone around and done these presentations on NEARS, I've gotten quite frequently questions about immediate outcomes for reporting outbreak data to NEARS. So many state and local agencies are really interested in some immediate outcomes for reporting to NEARS for their specific agencies. And it's important to remember that NEARS is a surveillance system. And by their nature, surveillance systems are not designed to provide immediate benefits to participants unless they are being paid to participate. They're designed to provide benefits over the long term. But here are some thoughts on some more immediate benefits. So when you report your environmental assessment data to NEARS, you are essentially increasing the reporting of environmental assessment data. And this is very helpful because at this time, as I previously mentioned, those data are limited. So we need more data to be able to talk more confidently about foodborne outbreak data that's reported to CDC. Additionally, when you report your environmental assessment data to NEARS, you'll have access to practical information about conducting environmental assessments. So you'll have access to the data collection reporting tool that's available that will provide a guide for conducting environmental assessments. And then you'll also have access to some of our environmental assessment training that is available to those who either collect environmental assessment data or report those data to NEARS. And then lastly, you'll have access to a free database entry and storage system. So any data that you enter into NEARS, you have access to your data at any time thereafter. So basically provides you with a free data and storage system. Now in the long term, we're hoping that the data that's being collected within NEARS will help improve foodborne outbreak response. And we'll be better able to answer questions um, related to identifying program factors that lead to contributing factors and confirmed uh, foodborne outbreaks. So we'll be able to talk more clearly about outbreak response, timeliness, the quality of communication uh, between the communicable disease programs and environmental health during outbreak investigations, and then specific investigation activities, for example, that would lead to identifying contributing factors. Additionally, we'll be able to improve retail food safety by identifying contributing factors associated with specific foodborne outbreaks and identifying environmental antecedents associated with foodborne outbreaks. So, for example, um, we'll be able to see if there are any associations with bacterial outbreaks and the lack of consumer advisories and temperature policies or being able to look at viral outbreaks and seeing if there's any correlation or association with the lack of ill worker policies and consumer access to foods. Now these next few slides will provide you with some preliminary outbreak data that was reported to NEARS in 2014. So in 2014, there were a total of 111 outbreaks reported. Norovirus was the most commonly reported identified primary agent and restaurants accounted for the most frequently reported facility types. And contributing factors were identified in 58% of our outbreaks for 2014. And the most frequently reported were uh, C10, which is bare hand contact by a food worker, handler, or preparer who is suspected to be infectious. C12, other mode of contamination, excluding cross-contamination by a food worker, handler, or preparer who is suspected to be infectious. And then C11, glove hand contact by a food worker or handler who is suspected to be infectious. Now this next slide notates the number of visits that were taken to complete environmental assessments. And as you can see, most environmental assessments were completed within one to two visits. Additionally, establishments with ill worker policies were noted to be pretty popular or frequently answered yes by our manager interviewers or interviewees. 
Additionally, the quality of communication between the food regulatory program and the communicable disease program was rated relatively high. So it appears there's good communication amongst the environmental health programs and the communicable disease programs during outbreak investigations. Now, as I previously mentioned, when outbreak data on environmental assessment is reported to CDC, it provides us an opportunity to strengthen the robustness of data that's reported in general as it relates to foodborne outbreak data reported to CDC. At this time, the National Center for Environmental Health is working pretty collaboratively with the National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Diseases who oversee and maintain the national outbreak reporting system. So when outbreaks are reported to both NEARS and NORS, it provides us an opportunity to strengthen the robustness of outbreak data that is reported to CDC. So to give you an example of that, outbreak data is typically reported into NORS by state epidemiologists. And for this outbreak, you can see the exposure date was um, noted as being uh, March 7th, 2014. The date of first ill was March 8th, and the facility type was noted as being a restaurant. The identified agent was norovirus, and there were about 12 primary cases that were noted. The implicated food source was cranberry coleslaw, or cabbage, and it was also noted that there was epidemiological evidence to implicate a food worker. Now, when outbreak data for the same outbreak is reported into both NEARS and NORS, it provides us with additional context for the outbreak. So we're able to see a little bit down the chain of events that took place during the outbreak investigation. So typically, again, environmental health specialists are reported into NEARS. And as you can see, the date the establishment was identified for an environmental assessment was on March 10th. The date of first contact with the establishment management was also on March 10th. The establishment type was a restaurant where there was an American menu type. Saturday was the day of the week, and they typically serve about 800 meals each day. The contributing factor that was noted during this outbreak was a C12, other mode of contamination excluding cross-contamination by a food worker, handler, or preparer who is suspected to be infectious. And it's important to note during the manager review within their health policies, it was noted that they did have written ill worker policies in place at the establishment to restrict or exclude ill workers. And it was also noted that managers received paid sick leave. However, Food workers were not noted as receiving paid sick leave. It may be an environmental antecedent that led to the cause of this particular outbreak. As previously noted in the data that was collected in NEARS, there was evidence to implicate a food worker. Now, these next few slides provide just some general additional information about the benefits of reporting environmental assessment data to NEARS. Now, specifically for our environmental health programs, when environmental assessment data is reported, there are annual reports that summarize your data each year. So essentially the data that you enter into the system, at the end of the year, you will receive a summary of your outbreak data that was reported to NEARS. Additionally, participating in NEARS allows you an opportunity to collaborate and communicate with other states and locals that participate in NEARS. Um, we have quarterly calls where we get together our NEARS participants to discuss issues that may be happening in the field or activities to help improve the processes that are related to conducting environmental assessments. There are also opportunities to work on scientific publications Additionally, you have an opportunity to document and track foodborne outbreak response data. And then last but certainly not least, for those that are interested in meeting FDA's retail food regulatory program standards, specifically standard five, NEARS is encouraged for reporting your environmental assessment data. So for those that are interested in meeting standard five, it is highly encouraged that you report your environmental assessment data to NEARS. Now, over the long term, we anticipate a number of additional benefits. So we envision that the outbreak data that's being reported will be strengthened over time. There'll be a prevention of cases and deaths. 
fewer social and economic disruptions when epidemics are prevented and their obvious cost savings. And then uh, lastly, social and psychological benefits stemming from less apprehension when outbreaks are rare or non-existent. So for those that are interested in wondering how you can begin reporting your program's data to NEARS, uh, we have three simple steps. Uh, the first is to commit to conducting environmental assessments. And the second is to complete our NEARS registration forms, which are available online at our websites. And then lastly, we encourage all those that are collecting environmental assessment data and or reporting environmental assessment data to NEARS to complete our free online environmental assessment training. So in closing, having a robust national description of environmental factors of foodborne outbreaks for establishments that represent 68% of foodborne outbreaks reported in this country can make the difference between driving in circles or doing the same thing over and over and expecting progress and having information to develop new policies and practices by being able to evaluate them. So I encourage you all to be change agents in your respective jurisdictions to prevent foodborne outbreaks. If not you, then who? Thank you so much, and this concludes today's presentation.